Now we have our seat in God's presence. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, instrumentation. The instrumental is sorry. Thank you very much. Once again, we'd like to welcome every one of us to this discovery service. We pray and we believe the Lord will meet each and every one at the point of our need. We have come to learn from the Master's feet. We have come to um, dig into the Bible this evening. And we have a special guest in our midst tonight. And without much ado, because I know he's loaded, he wants to impact us, he wants to leave us some good nudges. Please, help me welcome the uh, Senior Pastor General Vasia, like they say, of the Transformation Sanctuary International Ministry, United, London in the United Kingdom, Pastor Vincent Lawa. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. I don't know about the general overseer bit. Um, if you notice, my hair is still black. That's because I always reject that general overseer bit because the hair turns white the day you become general overseer. Amen. The Lord is good and all the time. Please let's pray. Father, we thank you today in Jesus' name. We thank you for this time in your presence. We thank you, Lord, because you are here already. And we thank you, Lord, because we know we will be blessed tonight. We have come to learn of you. We have come to receive of you. We pray, Spirit of God, speak to us tonight. Touch us, change our lives. And may Jesus alone be exalted in this place. We give you worship. We give you praise. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Hallelujah. Please have your seat in his presence. God bless you. Amen. Wow. It's nice to be home. Amen. This is home. And when I say that, I say that 100%. This is home. Um, I say it without equivo equivocation or ambiguity that I am home. Amen. And I see faces, I see people I know, um, people who have, who have been on this journey for years. Mm. Amen. Hallelujah. And it's good to see that souls are still standing. Amen. That we are serving God as we know how. Amen. And God will take us places in Jesus' name. Right. Um, I'll just say a few things before I go into a session of God's Word tonight. Um, the first thing I want to say is that I am a product of God's mercies and God's grace. Amen. God has been good. God has been faithful. And I thank God for the family God has given me. Amen. Hallelujah. I see my family members around. Amen. Both physical, spiritual, and people we have traveled this journey together. And I say God bless you. And thank you for all your care and your support. May God continue to lift you up in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm also a product of the impact that Pastor and Mommy B has had in my life and in my family too. Amen. Um, it is wisdom for someone to have a covering over your life. Amen. And they are the coverings over our lives. They are the covering over Transformation Sanctuary. So I thank God for the things that we continually learn. Um, I thank God for the brother who sent the WhatsApp messages with pastor's messages. Amen. I receive it and I listen to it wherever you are. God bless you. Hallelujah. Amen. And very, very importantly, I thank God for my best friend. I thank God for my support. I thank God for my wife who God has given me. Because although salvation is the most important decision I've made in life, she is the second best decision I have made. And she has been a partner on the journey. And she has been, she has been wonderful. I believe she's watching us tonight. And just take it as pastor preaching in church again. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, for those of you who were involved in this December outreach, I say thank you and God bless you. Hallelujah. Amen. 
for partnering with us, Transformation Sanctuary, to reach out to the community and go there. I saw the videos. I saw the crowd. I saw the guy who said, you know what? God bless you forever. You know, it was just wonderful. And we showed it to our people back home. And they were really happy. And they were really blessed. So I thank God for your lives. Amen. Apparently, I have a lot to thank God for. Two more. I thank God for the intercessory team of this church. Amen. Uh, I don't know if your worth is known inside, but some of us know your worth outside. Amen. Um, I was flying into the UK. I need to be mindful of time. I was flying into the UK and, of course, looking at scriptures instead of watching silly movies. I was going through scriptures, studying Ezekiel at the moment. We'll be talking about Ezekiel tonight. I was going through scriptures and... Revelation was being released in, you know, like low current, you know, the current that doesn't, you know, there is light, but Nepa is not working. So I was receiving revelation, but it was slow. And I did that for three hours on the plane and for in Ezekiel. And then I said, you know what, let me just switch to our meeting tonight. And as I switched, it was bam, open heavens. Come and see, download, download, download. Ah, I said, some people have been praying. Amen. And I, and, I, and I got home and my beloved brother here, Dickin, um, came and picked me and got home and all that. And after he had fed me and ensured that I was well fed, he then told me, he said, you can go to sleep. I am going to pray. I said, ah, you know the 12 to 1 a.m. intercessory prayer? He said, I'm joining them tonight. I said, and you fed me. May God forgive you in Jesus' name. <laughs> Amen. I know that the prayers you are raising in this house works. And may God continue to use you in Jesus' name. And for every other person who has been serving faithfully all over, over the years, may the Lord bless you in Jesus' name. Peter, I see you. God bless you in Jesus' name. And finally, I thank God for Pastor and Mommy B. I thank God for their lives. I thank God for what they've been to us as a family. And we'll continue to journey together in Jesus' name. Please turn your Bibles to Ezekiel chapter 1 tonight. Ezekiel chapter 1. And I'm considering a topic titled, Accessing God's Best Through Service. Accessing God's Best true service. So it's a year of access. Amen. Um, in Revelation chapter 3 verse 7 to 8 it says, I know your works. Now I'll be looking at works tonight. Amen. It says, I know your works. Hallelujah. And I know the Lord has said before us an open door. Amen. I mean, we enter in and receive the blessings in Jesus name. Accessing God's best through service. We'll read Ezekiel chapter 1 verse 1 to 14. I will not promise that we'll cover it all, but we will try our best. We'll see as God will lead us. We'll cover as much as we can. And tonight, I will be encouraging you, and I'll be challenging you at the same time. Amen. But please, let's stay together on this journey, and the Lord will take us to our promised land in Jesus' name. Ezekiel chapter 1 from verse 1. Now, as you know, Ezekiel is a book of the Bible where... If we can skip it, if we can brush through, if we can move away from, we do that very, very quickly. And chapter one is one of those books, uh, one of those chapters where people seldom read because it's so coded and all that. And then if you scale through chapter one and you scale through chapter 18, the soul that sins shall die and you scale through the judgment on the nations and you scale through the restored Israel and you scale through the judgment upon Gog and Magog and Egypt and Babylon and Tyre and all of that and you read about Lucifer in Ezekiel 28, you then come towards the end of the chapter and you get to chapter 40 to 48 and it confuses you all together. That is the book of Ezekiel. But it was because of the depth of what that man saw in God. And we're going to learn from it tonight. Amen. Ezekiel chapter 1 from verse 1. Now we came to pass in the 30th year, in the fourth month, on the fifth day of the month, as I was among the captives by the river Chiba, that the heavens were opened and I saw visions 
of God. On the fifth day of the month, which was the fifth year of King Jehoiachin's captivity, the word of the Lord came expressly to Ezekiel, who was Ezekiel, the priest, the son of Buzai, who would become a prophet, in the land of the Chaldeans by the river Chiba. And the hand of the Lord was upon him there. I pray for you that the hand of the Lord will rest upon you. Rest upon your family, rest upon your business. Rest upon all that you do in the mighty name of Jesus. He said, then I looked and behold, a whirlwind was coming out of the north. Mm, north. A great cloud with raging fire engulfing itself and brightness was all around it and radiating out of its midst like the color of amber out of the midst of the fire. Verse 5. Also from within it came the likeness of four living creatures and this was their appearance. They had the likeness or the structure of a man. Meaning they were standing tall, they were standing straight. Verse 5. Uh, verse 6, each one had four faces and each one had four wings. Their legs were straight and the soles of their feet were like the soles of cow's feet. They sparkled like the color of burnished bronze. The hands of a man were under their wings on their four sides and each of the four had faces and wings. Verse 9, their wings touched one another. The creatures did not turn when they went, but each one went straight ahead. You will go straight forward this year in the mighty name of Jesus. Whatever has kept you back was released tonight in the name of Jesus Christ. Verse 10, as for the likeness of their faces, each had the face of a man. Each of the four had the face of a lion on the right side. Each of the four had the face of an ox on the left side. Each of the four had the face of an eagle. Verse 11. Thus were their faces. Their wings stretched upwards. Two wings of each one touched one another and two covered their bodies. And each one went straight forward. They went wherever the spirits wanted to go. They did not turn when they went. May the Lord bless the reading of his word in Jesus' name. So a bit of a background here. Here was Ezekiel who was a priest and at the age of 30, at the age when in Israel you are presented as a man, at the age when you start your ministry, at the age when you are considered you're no longer a child, you are a man now. At that age, Having been trained from the age of 20, at that age, when he turned 30, Ezekiel looked at his life and he felt nothing good was going to come out of it. Amen. And are there not many of us also who are in that position? You are counting the years over time. You are counting the years and you are beginning to come to a realization that ah, all the dreams, all the visions, all the thoughts that I had, all the great things I wanted to do for myself, the great things I wanted to do for God, I've gotten to a point now where it is looking less and less likely that it is going to happen. That was the condition Ezekiel was at. At the age of 30, five years before that time, he had been carried captive from the land of Judah into Babylon. And five years in Babylon, on his 30th birthday, he was just there and he was looking and he was like, what will happen to my life? But back to verse 1, the Bible says, as he was among the captives, among the slaves in the land of Babylon, that the heavens were opened and he saw the visions of God. I bring good news to somebody tonight. God has a plan for your life and he will bring it to pass if you don't give up on him. Amen. People often give up on God because they have experienced failure or they have experienced setback or when they thought it was going to happen, it didn't happen then. They give up on God and they're like, you know what? I'd better look for something else to do. After all, I've been told that to repeat something over and over again and expect a different result is the definition of what? Madness. But then where is perseverance? Where is patience? Where is he who continually goes forth sowing with weeping will doubtless come back with harvest bearing his sheaves with him? 
Many of us have tried things and we're at a point now where we're giving up on them. But God has a plan for our lives and he will bring it to pass if we don't give up on him. It's time that somebody rises up, wipe the tears, blow their nose, wash their face and try again. Because as you do that, God will visit you in Jesus' name. Still in verse 1, God will send you to the place where you will fulfill your calling for him. Hmm. Amen. Some of us will get there by boats. Some of us by bus. Some of us on Okada. Some of us by train. Some of us will fly there. Some of us will swim there. Some of us will get there in our dreams. But God himself will orchestrate your steps to, for you to get to the place where you will be blessed. So before you throw in the towel, before you say, oh, how did I get here? This wasn't my plan. This wasn't where I wanted to be. How did I get there? Before you do that, you need to realize that God makes all things work together for good to those who love God and those who are the called according to his purpose. Romans chapter 8 verse 28. Amen. And also, the righteous may be caught up in the problems that faces the wicked, but it is not, uh, it is not a proof that God has forgotten about him. Amen. In the UK, I'll give you an example. In the UK, because of COVID, millions of people lost their jobs. Millions of people lost their jobs. I'm sure part of those were Christians too. 125,000 thereabouts have died in the UK because of COVID. Some Christians would have been part of that. A lot of the things that have happened in society that happens in this society affects Christians too, doesn't it? We were coming to church this evening. There was traffic on the way. We are believers. Why didn't angels just clear the road, you know, and just, you know, maybe just fly, you know, and we get here. But it doesn't happen. So we may face the same challenges as those in the world, but we must remember something, that in it all, God will make it work together for our good. Amen. Ezekiel was meant to be a priest. And here God appeared to him and ordained him to be a prophet in the land of captivity. At the same time, Jeremiah was ordained a prophet in the land of Judah. At the same time, Habakkuk was ordained a prophet in the land of Judah. At the same time, Obadiah was ordained a prophet in the land of Judah. At the same time, Daniel was ordained a royal prophet. I like that one. Royal prophet in the palace of Babylon. And at some point in Ezekiel, God will tell Ezekiel that even if faithful men like Daniel are in Judah, they will only save themselves. They won't even save their own family. God has a plan for our lives. Amen. And he will lead us to where those plans will be fulfilled. Amen. I'll give you one more from that verse 1. You can see into the realm of the spirits and know exactly what God is doing even amidst chaos and amidst problems. Amen. When people got to Babylon, Psalm 137, they hung their harps. And then they started singing, by the rivers of Babylon, there we sat down, here we were, when we remembered Zion. It was a long time before I realized that that was in the Bible. I thought it was just Bonnie M singing, you know, very, very nice song. But whilst others were sitting by the river, Whilst others were being taunted by their enemies, Ezekiel sat by the same river and he saw the visions of God. May you see the visions of God in the name of Jesus Christ. You have dwelt amongst, it is not working. It won't work. It cannot work. We don't know the way forward. I am confused. I've tried this. I've tried that. All you need to see is the vision of God. Amen. All you need is for God to open your eyes and for you to see his plan and purpose for your life. If Ezekiel had insisted on remaining a priest, he would have lost his destiny. He was an ordained prophet. Even though trained as a priest, the same with Jeremiah, 
Jeremiah was an ordained prophet, an ordained priest who was trained to become a prophet. Isaiah was a royal prophet who lived in the times of Uzziah and other kings, just like Daniel was a royal. So when you look at the four major prophets, two of them were priests turned prophets and two of them were royal prophets. Two of them suffered a lot, two of them enjoyed a lot. God has a plan for our lives, people. Amen. And he will fulfill it in Jesus' name. Let's move on because of time. Because of time. So verse 2, it says, On the fifth day of the month, which was in the month, which was in the fifth year of King Jehoiachim's captivity, the word of the Lord came expressly to Ezekiel, the prophet, the son of Buzai, in the land of the Chaldeans. I pray the word of the Lord will come to you in Jesus' name. As you cultivate how does God's word come to us as we cultivate his presence as we create an atmosphere he is happy with as we create an ambience which the Bible says he dwells in the praises of his people amen I always say when you pray God send angels to answer your prayers yeah but when you worship he comes himself he comes, he, he, he inhabits it. He comes, he dwells there. Amen. And thank God for the sister who led us tonight. Hallelujah. Many of us come to church because we're looking for that presence. You are wonderful. We want to sing to him and all that. And we are missing the trick because you can create that ambience at home. Amen. And God will come into your home and spend hours with you. Not an, not an hour in church, but hours at home. But for some of us in church, we are looking for that presence. And God is saying, I'd rather visit you at home. I'll visit you at your personal altar. Create an ambience for me at home. Instead of just lifting up your holy hand to me in church, lift up a holy place for me at home. Get rid of malice. Mm, we, don't, we, don't, we don't do that here, do we? No, no. That's in the UK. You know, husband and wife, malice, one week, two weeks. That's in the UK, not here. Amen, hallelujah. You are all holy people, hallelujah. God bless you real good. Get rid of malice, get rid of anger, get rid of bitterness, get rid of terror inside your own house. Create an... Am I dare tell you this. For some of us, God is afraid to come into our house. Because when he sees your face... He inhabits the praise of his people, not the anger of his people. Amen. Let us create an ambience. And then those things you've been praying, I have learned from experience that worship gives me more answered prayers than praying. Amen. That just being in his presence, singing to him, worshiping and all that, releases his hand upon me, releases the blessing more than just kneeling down and saying, God, give me and give me and give me. So the hand of the Lord was upon him and he began to see. Amen. Verse 4, he said, then I looked and behold a wild wind was coming out of the north, a great cloud with raging fire engulfing itself. I'm sure some people are like, what does that mean? And a brightness all around it, radiating out of its mist, like the color of amber, out of, out of the mist of it. What does this mean? What does this mean? Number one, every detail of your life will make sense in the end. Amen. If you walk with God by faith. Some of us want to understand it all. Say, Lord, give me the A to Z of my life. Here was Ezekiel seeing a wild wind coming from the north. Can't explain the north tonight. A wild wind coming from the north. And he has fire and he has storm and he has everything. But out of that wild wind will come his greatest experience ever. You might be going through a storm here, brothers, sisters. You might be going through a challenging time. Out of that whirlwind will come the miracle you need for your next level. In the mighty name of Jesus. If you only hold on to God and pay attention to this thing you cannot explain, but you refuse to give up, God will begin to open it. The Bible says precept upon precept, line upon line, a little here, a little there. Scriptures cannot be broken. That's how it works. God seldom gives us the full picture once. It's a little here, a little there. Precepts upon precepts, line upon line. 
That's how he opens up his word to us. So Ezekiel saw this wild wind in the, in the sky. And like I said, every detail of your life will make sense, even though it seems confusing. So we've learned a bit about Ezekiel. Let's now go deeper, amen, and learn more about these creatures I have come to fall in love with. Let's go to verse 5. Also from within it, within what? Within the great cloud, within the storm, within all of the fire and the brightness and all of that. Also from within it came the likeness of four living creatures. And this was their appearance. They had the likeness of a man. Amen. I want to give a word of encouragement again to somebody tonight. And that word is this. A word of encouragement to somebody tonight. That word is this. You are the best thing God has created. Amen. You are the way you are. Exactly just how you are. Is the best thing God has made. So what does that tell us? Number one, you don't need to be envious of any other person. You don't need to be like any other person. The firmament is big enough for all stars to shine. And because you are a star, you will shine. Amen. So you are the best thing that God has created. The Bible says, what is man that thou art mindful of him? Psalm chapter 8. Or the son of man that thou thinkest about him. He says, you have made him a little lower than Elohim. Yeah. KJV, angels. NKJV, angels. New Living Translation, good news, message. Which other ones? Made him a little lower than God. Made him a little lower than Elohim himself. You are, when God made man, God sat in front of a mirror and looked at himself, was looking at the mirror and began to draw the shape of man. In Job, Job tells us, he says the angels were there, were watching too, and they were clapping. And like, God, go on, go on, go on. What is this that you are creating? And God said, this will be the best prototype ever of myself that I am making. Why then would you allow somebody tell you that you are not good enough? Why would you live your life on the brink of trying to get someone's praise or affirmation? Say, ah, he frowned this morning. I have a bad day. You shouldn't live your lives like that. Amen. A Christian should not have a problem with esteem because we are created in the image and the likeness of God. We are the best thing that he has created. Now, let me tell you a little about this. These guys in this verse 5 that we're reading, cherubims. What are cherubims? Cherubims are angels, yeah? A type of angels. Cherubims are the guardians of the sacred places. That's their role. Cherubims guard the throne of God. Amen. You dare not move near. Cherubims sit upon the ark of the covenant with their wings covering it. And God is enthroned upon the cherubim when he speaks to Israel. Cherubims were in the garden of Eden before Adam got there. And after Adam left in Genesis 3.24, cherubims came back to guard the garden. Cherubim were there when Jesus died. One at his head and the other one at his feet while he laid in the tomb. In Revelations, cherubims are right in front of the throne of God. These are large, terrible looking, awesome, fierce angels that guard the presence of God. When God visits the earth, a cherubim takes him. Psalm chapter 18 verse 10. He rode on the wings of a cherub when he visited David. Amen. In Ezekiel, Ezekiel chapter 1, if you open up that scripture more, four cherubims with wheels came in God's car. You know God has a car? Like a proper car. Proper. Proper. I mean it. God has a proper, proper car. Four wheel. Four wheel drive. It started with God. Proper car. Each cherubim drove a wheel. 
So there are four wheels with four cherubims. The spirit of the cherubim is in the wheel. And each cherubim drives the wheel. And their wings are connected. And God sits on top of them. There's a dome. And then God sits upon the throne. And when Ezekiel, who was despondent and depressed, was going to be ordained, God visited him in his car. And came down and said, son, it is time that you begin to do what I've asked you to do. My question is, he says, I know your works. If God were looking for another driver, will he consider you? Amen. We can learn a lot from these creatures, from this, from this cherubim. Let's continue because of time. So he said he had the likeness of man. What is the key lesson there? He had the likeness of man. That's in verse 5. God wants us to serve him with our intelligence and the spirit of excellence. Amen. God wants us to do what? Serve him with our intelligence and the spirit of excellence. In Psalm 92 verse 5, the Bible says, Oh Lord, how great are your works. Your thoughts are very deep. God is a thinker. Are you? Am I? Amen. You know, sometimes we look at the things of faith and we say, oh no, all we need is faith. Let's just do it by faith and all that. By faith, God created the heavens and the earth. God did not just create the heavens and the earth by faith. He created it by excellence too. We have an ambience. Something nice. It came as a product of what? Thoughts. We need to engage our minds that in the things that we do for God, if we're going to access his presence, we need to engage our minds. I'm not saying think yourself outside of faith. I'm saying use the facility God has given you to make his kingdom better and your own life better too. Many of us are still living as a product of chance. If it happens, well, I say, what's your plan for this year? What's your plan? What do you want God to do this year? I say, I'm trusting God for a miracle. I need to wipe my head on that one. It doesn't work that way. Amen. Remember, I said, this is home. I'm home. Amen. It doesn't work that way. Because unless you plan, he says, he who fails to plan, has done what? Has already planned to fail. Dickin, do you wake up in the morning and just start, what is going to happen today? I will. Maybe when I drive to Garrison, then I'll get to park. Then I'll go to Oye Mill. Then I'll branch in church and then, but do you know that is how some Christians live their lives? We don't engage this facility God has given us. He says, look at that, Psalm 92 verse 5 to 6. Psalm 92, verse 5 to 6. Oh Lord, how great are your works. Your thoughts are very deep. Verse 6. A senseless man does not know, nor does a fool understand this. May God help us in the name of Jesus. God created this awesome and fierce looking beings but he made them in the form of a man why because we're intelligent and we have the spirit of excellence in us daniel how did he excel in babylon by the spirit of excellence joseph how did he excel in egypt by the spirit of joseph said he said he said he said you have a dream cow eating cow tree eating tree so Pharaoh said, what does that mean? He said, cow eating cow, yes eating yes, famine eating profit, and all that. He said, okay, if Joseph had stopped at that, he wouldn't have become a prime minister. Now that's where most of us stop as Christians. I've given the interpretation. So what is the solution? So Joseph said, Pharaoh, find a man who will govern the seven years of plenty, and keep enough food to keep Egypt alive during the time of famine. The Bible says, Pharaoh said, is there anybody else who has the spirit of wisdom like this man? The spirit of the gods like this man? And the Bible will tell us in the book of Psalms, it says, and Joseph by wisdom taught Pharaoh's, Joseph taught Pharaoh's senators wisdom. It wasn't just interpretation of dreams. Speaking to some of my, one of my sons last week, I said, talent is not enough. 
Amen. It is not enough. I can do this. A million people can do it. What's different about you? They had the likeness of a man because God expected them to think and to act in excellence. Okay, let's move on. Let's move on. Verse 6. He says, each one had four faces. I'll come back to that in a minute. And each one had four wings. Four wings. They had wings. Why? Because they need to serve God with speed. Amen. God is looking for people who will serve him with what? With speed. They are not just running. They are not walking. They fly. He sends them on an errand. They fly. Some of us, we are still slow. Partial obedience. Some of us, delayed obedience. Some of us, disobedience. No, disobedience, yeah? Disobedience. And all of that. God wants us to run like the cherubs. When he sends us, bam, we are gone. And if you are still waiting for God to come down from heaven to send you directly, guess what? God will use men to send us. Amen. He will use our leaders. He will use your HOD. He will use your friend. He will use your prayer partner. But if you say, I know, until I hear directly. Some of us are still waiting to hear from God what he has sent to us through people. But because we don't appreciate the person that we have. I know someone. It doesn't matter what advice his wife gives him. He's like, ah, no, 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 please. What do you know? Ah, ah, please, 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 please. Now, guess what? Who will God send to you more than your wife? If you are working in sync and you are working in unity. In sync, sync, yeah? Sync, working together in unison other than your wife. Amen. So, he says, they had four wings for speed. Verse 7, their legs were straight and the soles of their feet were like the soles of calf feet. Stability. Reliability. Do we want to access God's presence? We need to be stable. Amen. We need to be reliable. God must be able to count on us. Our pastors must be able to count on us. Amen. We need to be stable. A calf has four feet. And like a deer's feet, it is also for, and it is for stability. In Habakkuk chapter 3, Habakkuk chapter 3, um, verse 17, I believe. Habakkuk 3, 17, 3, 19. He says, the Lord is my strength. He will make my feet like deer's feet, and he will make me walk on my high heels. So, well, I mean high heels, not, not high, not high heels, yeah? High heels, yeah? He said, ah, the pastor came. He said, God will make me walk on my high heels. I'm going to buy, I'll buy many high heels, you know. I just, I, this is God, hallelujah. And no, 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 high heels, mountain heels, high heels. He will make me walk on my high heels. Many of us are waiting for God to make us walk on the high heel, but we are not stable. And unless you are stable, you cannot climb up the hill because you just lie down and fall. So God is waiting for us to be stable and reliable before he takes us to our high hills. One of my favorite scriptures, Isaiah 62 verse 11. He says, indeed the Lord has proclaimed to the end of the world. Say to the daughter of Zion, surely your salvation is coming. I pray that your deliverance will come in the name of Jesus. I pray that your answered prayers will come in the name of Jesus. But look at this. He says, behold, pay attention. Listen to this. His reward is with him and his work before him. Your deliverance will come. The signs and wonders will come. The miracles will come. But the works have to precede the reward. Jesus set us an example. He says, having taken the appearance of a man, he was led to the cross and he died the death of a criminal. He says, and after that, God exalted him and gave him a name that is above every other name. That at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow of things in heaven, of things on earth, and of things under the earth. And that every tongue should confess that Jesus is Lord to the glory of God the Father. How? He did the work and he got the reward. But we want the reward first. 
He said, God, if you lift me up, I will serve you. You've missed it. We serve him first, faithfully. That's why he says, I know your works. My question is, what work does God know with us? I know your works. I will bless you, yes. I will lift you up. But guess what? What comes before that is your works. I know your works. May we serve God as he would have us do in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Right, let's move on. Verse 8, because I'm mindful of time. Verse 8, he says, The hands of a man were under their wings, on their four sides, and each had four faces and wings. The hand of a man. You know, some of us, I love Christianity. Sometimes we just oscillate from one extreme to the other extreme. You say, ah, bro, Paul, what are you having? What are you eating this afternoon? They say, a prakut, li krokosh kedisk. He said, what does that mean? He said, you need to interpret it in the spirit to know that I'm talking about loi loi and stockfish. Always in the spirit and yet not relevant on the earth. You find men saying, women, everybody says, ah, you know what, yesterday I was in communication with the Holy Spirit and he was showing me some things which are not from, for this generation. I said, it's time for you to die. It's not for this generation. Go and meet God. You are useless here. Amen. Some of us have placed ourselves on such a pedestal that even God himself has to come and say, Sir, please, can I ask you to give an offering today? Because you have learned so much that, look, in the New Testament, read through the New Testament, tithes is not, it wasn't really in the church. It wasn't in the church of the New Testament and all that. These are Old Testament things that we're trying to bring in. And if you have the right revelation, you know, if you have the mystery, the mystery of the third temple, you know, the temple that is not made by hands, then you will know that tithes will not be paid there. And we are the temple. You are just being stingy and selfish. <laughs> Give unto God what belongs to God. Amen. So we are so, we have gotten to the other extreme. We can't relate to people anymore. These cherubims had hands and their hands were for work. Because Paul will tell us that the hand that does not work must not do what? Must not eat. Jesus fasted. We saw miracles. Elijah fasted. We saw national repentance. Moses fasted. We got the Ten Commandments. When you fast, what do we get? Amen. Like I said, I'm home. And we have to talk about the truth of these things. Amen. Hallelujah. Ah, God will help us in Jesus' name. Let's move on because of time. I'm, I'm really, really mindful um, of time here. Verse 9. Their wings touch one another. The creatures did not turn wherever they went, but each one went straight forward. I pray that will be a people of unity. Amen. No man can serve God as a lone ranger. No man. Some of us are thinking, I wish everybody was like me. You know, all of us, we pray. <laughs> mm. I wish everyone can sing like me. I wish everyone can serve like me. We are the body of Christ. Amen. Some of us are heads, brain, eyes, mouth. That's like, you know, some people will start talking. When they call you and you see their number, you say, hey, Jesus is not. No, no. I won't pick this one now. No, 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 no. They are the mouth of the gospel. Some of us are hands, feet, leg, back, bum bum. You now, when I was thinking about bum bum, I said, you know those people that when you are with them, they just make you, you know, you just feel relaxed. It doesn't matter how bad your day has been. When you come into their presence, they just say, it is well, it's fine, and all that. You don't feel like leaving them. Those are the bum bums of God, and all that. They keep you, they keep you happy. Amen. We are different. We can't all be the same. If all we had were eyes, we'd be monsters. So stop saying, I can't do this with people. I can't. And for some of us, if people don't see it our way, then it is no way. Ah, there's a problem there. 
Amen. We need to find anointing oil. Pour it lot. Because God wants us to serve him in unity. Paul was, I don't even know what body, what body part I would describe Paul as, but he was totally different from the rest of the apostles. They couldn't handle him. All through. Read through the book of Acts. They were always, Peter had to write in his final letter. He said, and some, um, and there's some things that Paul has written which are um, difficult to understand. And some people have wrestled with it to their own destruction. It means there were some things Peter read about Paul. I felt, you know this one, I don't even, I don't even understand. I leave it between him and God. Let us work together in unity. Let us work together in oneness and we'll reach our promised land in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. All right, as we round up, verse 9, their wings touch one another. Verse 10, they are the faces of a man. I've spoken about that already. Intelligence, excellence. <coughs> Excuse me. Intelligence and excellence. They are the face of a lion, royalty, strength, majesty. They are the face of an ox, stability, strength, reliability and they are the face of an ego ability to see far ability to see into the future those were their faces verse 11 their wings stretch upwards two wings of each one touched one another and two covered their bodies again you see them touching they were touching each other in love we have to touch one another in love. Amen. We have to support one another as we serve God. There are two types of people you'll find on earth. Some who are process-oriented and some who are people-oriented. And you need to know what kind of person you are. And if you are process-oriented, you need to learn the skills to be people-oriented. And if you are people-oriented, you need to learn the skills to be process-oriented because you need a balance of the two to take things forward. As a church, we need to love one another. He says the two greatest commandments are what? Love the Lord your God. And then what? Love your neighbor as yourself. We need to love one another. If we're good. The cherubims, you can't serve God successfully outside of love. Amen. And I pray that the love of God will fill our hearts in Jesus' name. And finally, verse 12, he says, And each one went straight forward. They went wherever the Spirit wanted them to go. Two things. We will go forward this year. We will access his presence in the name of Jesus. And the Spirit of the Lord will lead us in the mighty name of Jesus. God's plan is for us to access his best. Ezekiel was a slave, a captive, and yet he accessed things that up to now we're still thinking, what does this mean? The cherubims who serve in God's presence show us a pattern of how God will have us serve him. I've come to challenge us tonight. Let us serve God as he desires, led by his spirit, filled with love, done in unity, we are not lazy. We are not slackers. We are putting in our best effort. And the best of heaven and earth and whatever is beneath the earth will be given to us in the mighty name of Jesus. Shall we bow down our heads as we pray this evening? I don't know what God has said to you. I don't know what you have learned tonight. But I want you to pray. I want you to say, Father, you see where I am. I may have been here by my own design, even though you are the one who is leading, or maybe I'm somewhere where I don't even want to be. It could be in your marriage, it could be in your job, it could be in your home. Whatever that situation is, like Ezekiel tonight, I want you just to pray one prayer for yourself. Say, Lord, lay your hand upon me and bring about change in the name of Jesus. Can you just pray that for yourself for a minute? That Father, lay your hands upon me you change Ezekiel's destiny by laying your hands upon him. Lord, lay your hands upon me and change my destiny. In the mighty name of Jesus. And then pray that God will grant you grace to serve him as he desires in the name of Jesus. Not with eye service or men service or lip service, but as he desires. I thank you, Father, tonight. Lord, I give you praise and I thank you for your people, O oh Lord who have come together tonight to hear your word. Lord, as you visited Ezekiel, Father, visit us in the name of Jesus. Change our lives. 
cause us to access your presence and may our lives not remain the same in the mighty name of Jesus. We love you, Father. We exalt you. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Hallelujah. Thank you for having me. God bless you. Thank you. Yeah,